Hi everyone, I hope you're all managing to keep safe during this really odd time and I hope that some of you may even have had time to even get your violins out and have a practice. So what I'm going to do in this video, something very basic, is just looking at the violin hold and the bow hold because I think a lot of the time when, I, when people have problems and they're not getting the sound they want, it's usually down to something going on with either the violin hold or the bow hold. So starting with the violin hold, I always say, try and imagine you have your invisible violin. In other words, just lift your hand up like this, perfectly natural, no twisting, no bending the wrist, no doing anything strange. So if you just imagine your violin's there, and using that shape, if you bring your violin up, it should fit perfectly into that arm shape there. So your fingers should be completely free to move around. No moving the wrist up, no moving the wrist out. Absolutely natural. Nice curve on the arm here. Chin. On the chin rest, I see a lot of, I often see a lot of this sort of thing going on, or violins hanging down here, or far too high. So it should be just about level, and your arm nice and curved. So going from rest position, into holding position, we often call this the open window, so we have a nice gap. Okay, so that's the first thing to watch out for. Bow hold, very important, because I often see a lot of this sword style bow holds going on. And then people often wonder why they get a crunchy, heavy sound. So what I always say is if you imagine your hand just to be completely floppy, like a dead spider, we've often said. Middle finger and the thumb, if you make a nice circle, keep it as round as you can. And if you place that just on the th thumb grip, your other fingers, they're free just to sit on the side, but little finger, very important, the pinky, must sit on the top. So it's perfect, it's nice to have a quite nice deep bow hold, I think, but keep the little finger on the top. You don't have to have your tips of your fingers right up there. This is absolutely fine. And check the thumb, make sure you've got a nice curved thumb there. Okay, no squeezing, no gripping. So putting that together with our nice relaxed violin hold, you're now ready to produce a good sound. So what you don't want to do at this point is to have fingers slipping behind here, wrists going up, violins drooping down. So keeping all this together, if we just practice on our D string, checking that the bow is staying in line with our bridge, we should be able to manage an absolute relaxed, smooth sound. And you'll notice that I'm actually able to get from this point of the bow, all the way to the very tip. So let's have a look, if I was to squeeze the bow or have fingers around here, we, straight away we get really unpleasant sounds. So a lot of the problem is always in the, in the bow hold or the violin hold. So once we've got this, once we're getting all the way through the bow, the next thing to look at is are we getting a nice relaxed wrist? Because what we don't want is the bow going around corners, moving up here. Everyone who gets lessons by me knows that we never play the violin, we never play up on the black part, we never play on the fingerboard, we certainly never play over here. <laughs> Disgusting sound. So, relaxing the wrist. If you watch my wrist, I'm coming down. It's bending out and then I'm allowing it to bend in. And this is all due, this is all due to me holding the instrument and the bow correctly, okay? Any squeezing, any contorted wrists and straight away we're looking we're getting small bows, bows going around corner. So, I'm doing a few videos, but before we attempt anything, any exercises, any of our pieces, absolutely crucial that we have a lovely violin hold. Just to recap one more time, lovely relaxed wrist, nice gap, nice curve on the arm, wrist just straight, not in, not out, bow hold, you must check before you start, do you have this shape? So hopefully seeing it on video here might help you. So if you look at my first finger, that's fine. That's absolutely fine to curve, keeping the thumb curved. And now I'm ready for nice relaxed wrist there, okay? So before you start any of the pieces, any of the scales, any of the exercises, that is what you must do first. So good luck with that. And hopefully that won't take too long to achieve.